we are going to be working in pen pastels and colored pencil. I am working on Cansony Tens. This is the black and I chose the smooth side of this one because I'm going to be using colored pencil. Now, normally if I use pen pastels, I prefer the slightly more rough side of the paper, but, or not pen pastels, charcoals, which is very similar in texture. I like that grippiness of the paper. But in this case, because I'm going on top with colored pencils, I really want a smoother finish for the pencils. Honestly, you could do it on either side, but so that the butterfly comes out a little bit more smooth. That's why I went with smooth paper. I've got it taped along the edges. This is with a pH neutral tape. I should have the link in the video description. This is a pH neutral masking tape. Now you may think I'm not leaving the tape there. Why can't I just use regular masking tape? I used to do that for years. The problem is that the regular masking tape, even this tape, it's going to leave some residue on the artwork itself. So unless you're chopping that off, if you're cutting it, I don't really worry about it because and you can just trim that off and not worry so much. But if you're not, like in this case, I don't want to trim the paper down. So I want to make sure that all the products I'm using with this are pH neutral. They're acid free. It's not going to leave a acidic residue that will start to eat away at the paper over time. Or it really, it's not that it eats away at it. It starts to yellow it. So I actually don't know how much of an issue that would cause on black paper, but just in case, why not just use the stuff that we know is safe. And I just get it on Amazon. It's not terribly expensive. I don't remember what I paid for this one, but it lasts a decent amount of time because the only thing I use this for is I actually have a thinner one when I mat my work and then I use it for taping work down, but I don't use it on like other household projects. So it really, even if it is, and it is a bit more expensive, obviously, than your normal masking tape, it's worth it and it's going to last you a long time. Okay, so this is my glassine. It comes in a roll. This is another thing. The link should be in the video description. What we're going to do is tape this to the artwork as I'm working on the butterfly. So one, I won't end up smudging my pastels that way. And two, I keep my people juices off the artwork. People juices, any grease, any oils on your hands, not archival. And I don't care how well you've washed your hands, that starts to get on there. So it's better as much as possible. We want to keep our people juices to ourselves and not on the work. And that's what the glassine is for. The glassine is pH neutral and it, nothing sticks to it. That's the bigger thing. So you could use another piece of paper that's better than nothing. I used to use a piece of tracing paper, better than nothing. But the problem is with tracing paper, with another sort of paper, a lot of times it will, like a little nugget of that will get under the paper you're working on. And when you slide the paper over, it kind of sticks and leaves a mark. That really sucks if you've got a background like this that you're not trying to fill with color. This, nothing's sticking to it. So the chances of that happening are much less likely. Also, I use this to wrap my artwork in, paintings and drawings, when I ship them. So I don't want cardboard, cardboard, not acid free. I don't want that up against the painting itself or up against the paper. So I wrap it in glassine first and then I box it. So I'm gonna be doing this first with the pan pastels. Pan pastels and colored pencil, great mixed medium to work with together. Like pan pastels just work great with so many things. So I'm going to be putting it on so many papers. I'm going to do the background. If you've got the reference photo, it's over at my, or if you need it, it's over at my website, lawcree.com. The, the direct link to this project is linked in the video description. So you can download the reference photo. I believe I got this one from Unsplash. So royalty free. If you draw this with me or you draw this after you have full rights, because we're both using photos that are royalty free to sell it, make prints, whatever you want. I don't need my glassine just yet because I won't need to rest my hand on the artwork. I'm going to be using soft tools to apply and blend this. What I do when I'm choosing my color, so with this one, it's just grays and blacks. So what I do is just take whatever color I want. I'm just going to rub that on there. And you can see mine are messy. You can see where other colors have been smudged. Honestly, it does not make that big of a deal. I know people get really like neurotic about keeping all of that clean. I just don't find it matters that much. So I don't worry about it. If you have to wipe it off, use a paper towel, but not a big deal. And I'm going to now come through and start building up my bouquet look. And I can go right over the butterfly. Don't even worry about getting any on him. It's not going to hurt anything. Because you can see, I can still see the little antenna sticking through there. I'd rather not get it all over the flower though. So we'll go around that. And I'm just working this in circles. Fill in the center though. So I've got little holes in the center there. Now I've tried using pan pastels with brushes, like paint brushes. I don't like the results I get or like mop brushes that I would use for blending with acrylics or powder brushes, that sort of thing. You end up just knocking too much product off the paper. A lot of it doesn't stick very well. So I'm starting with the gray. I'm going to come through with some black and some white to build up contrast in a bit here. See how this, this is just like the easiest. That bouquet look is so easy to get. And I'm not going to do it everywhere. I'm going to do like what the reference photo has where it's just kind of a row moving through. 
You wanna make sure when you do that bokeh look, you want variation in the circles. You want variation in the size. You want variation in like the value. Some of them should be brighter, some should be darker. Do not make them all the same. And you also want them to overlap. If you don't overlap these, it just looks like polka dots. We don't want polka dots. Unless you're going for an actual polka dot look, but that's not what we're doing here. And see how I don't have to keep reloading the brush. I can use the same what's there and it gives me that nice variation as it starts to fade out. So I always thought these were moths. I used to catch these when I was a kid. They were always around my grandmother had, I forget what kind of flowers they were, but they were always everywhere. I used to catch them and then set them free. I thought they were moths. They're not, they're actually, they're Essex butterflies. Kind of messed up my brain because I was certain they were moths when I was kids. A kid. When I was kids, I was plural kids. Fancy like that. And I'm going to leave what's there. I want just this soft, soft look fading out. So I thought I'd have to mix black in to get that softer faded look. And it looks like I won't need to. Just what little is left on that brush is giving me that beautiful soft look. Same thing, we're gonna get a really soft fade out here. Make sure those edges are soft. Now I'm also going to be using the pan pastels to fill in the butterfly and the flower. So I've got a nice base layer. It'll make the, the colored pencil portion go really quickly. Okay, and then anywhere where I want it to be a little bit brighter, I can go back over it. And just on a few of them, I don't want everything super bright. So I'm gonna keep adding a little bit of white. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just taking my brush a little bit there. I'm kind of tapping some of that off on the paper, uh, paper towel. I guess I should bring the microphone with me. I'm tapping that off a little bit on the paper towel so that it's not too bright white. We wanna get some variation in there. And I don't wanna make all of them super bright. I really want that to fade. So some are brighter, some are darker. I'm gonna make it more bright as we go through. Now, it looks like there's higher contrast on the video than what I'm seeing in purpose. Pur pur on purpose. My brain's not working tonight in person. So let me go ahead and move these guys. This is a bit softer. I may have to adjust the video cam or the camera now that we're getting some color on here. Well, not really color, but now that that's coming on there, it may need a bit of camera adjustment. Ah! I love the background already. Okay, so that's all I'm doing on the background. So this is gonna give me a little bit more control of the detail than the rounded one, whereas the rounded one gave me that nice soft look. Fix a few little things in there. Okay. So let's start with the butterfly. And he just looks like a, a yellow ochre for a lot of this. So I'm gonna load a little bit of that. And this doesn't have to be super clean or anything like that because the colored pencils are gonna correct a lot of this. We just wanna get a base layer. And you don't have to use the pan pastels for this. You could do it just with colored pencils, just that this is gonna give us a little bit of a softer look and it'll make the whole process a lot faster. And for the purpose of a live stream, that's pretty handy. A little bit of fluff in here. I'm gonna add a little bit of white. So when I mix colors, all I do, I'm gonna take a little bit of my white. See, I'm super messy. This is gonna drive people crazy. A little bit of white, I'm gonna mix it right there. Give you a little bit more white in with that. That's it, that's how I mix my colors with Pan Pastels. They are very much like paint in that they're really easy to mix the colors that you want. Now what I'll do, once I get the pan pastel on there, I'm gonna put Spectrafix over this so it kind of seals this down before I go start going over it with colored pencil. Get 
lighten that up a bit. And Spectrafix works fine as a spray for both. So that's why I go with that. Some sprays, some fixatives don't play nice with one or the other. The Spectrafix works great with both, or with both mediums, I mean. Little bit of that other wing showing down here. Okay, and it looks like most of the rest of this is gonna be a dark brown. Now I'm working with a light color already, so what I wanna do is just wipe this on my paper towel. I don't even have to reload or change the sponge, I can reuse it. I'm just gonna wipe some of that off. I don't wanna go too crazy because these do break down or start to rip really quickly, so I'm not gonna like go crazy scrubbing it off, but getting some. Now I'm gonna mix my, it looks like red oxide or burnt sienna, let's see what they call it. Uh, they call this burnt sienna. I'm gonna mix that with a bit of my black because black and burnt sienna give you a really nice brown tone. Mix a little of the red oxide in with that too. There we go. And I'll correct the shading in between that. I wanna let some of the black paper show through. I don't need to cover all of it. Fill that in. Oh, he's already really cute. Okay, now I'm going to start on the, the flowers. Uh, let's start with the purple. So I've got purple dioxazine. I'm gonna need to add some white to that. That is not showing up well. There we go, problem solved. Just a little bit of white in there. And so I'm doing the same thing. I'm mixing a little bit of white Got the purple together. Just like before, I can leave some of that black showing through. Now, if it seems a bit dull right now, don't worry. We can fix all of that with colored pencils when we go over this. Hear Greyhound sign behind me, they must be bored. And then we've got green on a lot of this too. So let's put a little bit more with the white. And then we'll do some green. Don't overblend this. If I just keep reworking the same area again and again and again, I end up with one medium color. I don't want that. I want a combination of darks and lights. Big deal with your art. Okay, and then the green, just dab some of that purple off the brush. I think this is chromium oxide, oxide chromium. I don't know what order that goes in. You'd think I'd know. I can't see the name, but I have to look on the back. So we're just gonna make stuff up. Point is it's green. Add a little bit of white. Remember if you add white though, you make it more pastel. It's not as true of a color or rich. Okay, I think that's about all I need for the pan pastels. The rest will be colored pencils. So let me go ahead and put this stuff away. So what I'm gonna do is lightly spray this with Spectrafix. So this is the Spectrafix, comes in a bottle like this. The problem is this bottle, when you spray it, it has these huge droplets come out and that will, you can, if it happens, you can blend over it. It's not the end of the world, but we can avoid most of that by putting this into a fine mist sprayer. This is wonderful. These are the same ones you see me use all the time for acrylic painting to get that fine mist to keep it wet while I blend. Also perfect for Spectrafix. And I'm just going to lightly mist this. 
Sorry, I didn't have it on there when I sprayed, but it was basically just a super light mist and that's all I did for spraying it. But when you spray it, it will, so a couple of things, I don't know if you can see, there's some little dots in here where the Spectra Fix did come out a little bit heavy. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my brush and just lightly smooth over that. So see, you, you lose it and the webcam may not pick that up because the webcam's not the most amazing with detail, but I, it's not like if it happens, it's that big of a deal. I'm just gonna blend. And there's not, I didn't reload this or add more pan pastels to make this happen. All I'm having to do is what, what little was on there and what's already on the paper, let that smudge so you get a softer look. The other thing is that when you add the Spectra Fix, you just made the paper wet. When the paper is wet, it starts to warp. By using the hair dryer, that helped it to tighten up back into place so it's totally flat again. Colored pencil. So now we need to choose our, our colors. Ideally, when possible, on something like this, I really like my polychromos when I've already got that base layer done because the polychromos are so good with your finer details. So that's my first choice. Next choice generally is going to be my Derwent Lightfast pencils. So part of it is going to be, depend on what color I need. We've got purples. We know I'm gonna want Derwent Lightfast because they have that brighter, richer color while still being Lightfast. So I'm gonna start with the browns and the yellow ochre. I'm gonna start with the butterfly tonight and I'm gonna grab my polychromos and see if we can get it opaque and bright enough. I'm gonna go with ivory for my highlights. I might use this cadmium yellow. It might be too bright. I definitely am going to be using the ye light yellow ochre. Terracotta. That looks like a good color. And now I need some browns. I think I'll probably put a bit of magenta in there too. So let's grab, that one should work. What is this one? Red violet. And then for the browns, I'm gonna go with burnt umber. And I'm just gonna tape this glassine to my drawing board. I'm gonna start with his eye. It's a big eye. He looks like a cartoon. It is adorable. And yeah, that actually works fine. So we've got the highlight I did with the yellow ochre. And you don't need to use the same colors I'm using at any point, you just go for close. What matters are that your values are correct. The people get so worked up on having the perfect, I'm just sharpening my pencil now, but having, having the exact right color the color's not a big deal. It's your values. Are your brights bright enough? Your dark's dark enough? That's what's going to make a difference, having that high contrast. And I've got to make sure my pencil's nice and sharp where I want clean edges. So around the eye for sure. Some of the edges we'll want soft, but some we want super sharp. I need to lighten it a little bit more on some of this. So we'll go on top with the ivory. Okay, actually we can use the ivory around his little fluffy face here. I swear if, if these guys, like moths especially, I love moths. If moths lived longer, I would keep those as pets. So cute. I love the fluff. I know this is a butterfly, but still, the fluff is adorable. And then where I want it a bit sharper, I can come back through with this. I'm gonna use a little bit of my red violet, so any magenta to break that up and make them look fluffier. You can use black for some, but when you're dealing with yellows, it's going to typically be better if you go with magentas. Now, one of the things you wanna watch, I see this mistake a lot when people do a project with butterflies and they've got multiple butterflies, they will pick one and almost copy paste it everywhere. The wings are in the exact same position. Everything's the same. Avoid that, it doesn't look good. Do, you wanna make sure you get variation whenever you're painting a group of butterflies like that together. Pick a little bit of a lighter orange there. Now this, like where I put that terracotta, it doesn't show up well. So that would be a case where I may wanna go with a more opaque pencil like the Karen Dosh Luminance or the Derwent Drawing, or Derwent Lightfast pencils. Those are gonna be more opaque than my polychromos. So that would be the reason I would switch in those cases. Yeah, let me see if Derwent Lightfast has a nice terracotta type color. Burnt Sienna. 
Yes, please. You can see why I like to have a few different brands. My three main brands I work with are going to be my Polychromos, that's the Faber-Castell, Derwent Lightfast, and my Caran d'Ache Luminance. I also use Derwent Drawing Pencils a lot. Those are thicker, they're really opaque, they're great for smooth, like out of focus backgrounds. Love them for that, but they're limited on colors. Oh yeah, this shows up way more. This is perfect. So this one is Burnt Sienna. Got little fluffy edges, so I'm going to make little lines coming through here. Hey, you. Yes, you. I see all your unused art supplies over there. Oh my god, those brushes aren't even opened yet. Tragic. You keep buying new fancy materials, but you don't use them because you don't want to waste them. Stop making your art supply sad. Sign up for art lessons for as little as $4 a month. There are over 300 painting and drawing lessons available when you sign up and new ones every week. Patreon.com slash Lockery. We've got a highlight with this ivory. I'm gonna pull right through there. Those frayed edges, so just those kind of sketchy lines. Same thing down here. He's got a fluffy bum. I'm going to use the ivory for some of these lighter spots. Pet that orange would look good. Yep, that shows up really good there for us around his face. Let's grab, get his legs in there. Okay, and it looks like he's got some fluff from his body that shows through there. Then we've got this wing, let's get that edge cleaned up. You wanna make sure the inside, a lot of this is really fuzzy, kind of out of focus. Those outer edges though, keep those clean. We don't want that to just kind of blend into the background in this one. I'm pushing fairly hard at this point, I'm giving it a decent amount of pressure where I really want that to show. Remember, anywhere where you push harder, you're doing what we call burnishing, and the harder you push, the more it's gonna come out more smooth, more solid, but you flatten the tooth, the tooth of the paper. So that means you're not gonna be able to get a lot of layers on top. So you wanna keep burnishing where you're pushing really hard for areas towards the end of the work or areas you know you don't need a lot of layers on top. And I don't care if these are exact, close is good enough. But keep your details where they should be clean, just watch for that. And really work on that contrast, that really dark, dark against the really light lights. That matters on this one. Now, one of the things that's great if you look closely at the reference photo, some of this is kind of really grainy looking because you've got that soft, velvety look. That is going to happen naturally with just how the colored pencils work on the paper. Don't overblend that. I don't know if you can see this on the reference photo, but in through here, we've got this kind of grainy look. That's perfect. Now, often you'll hear me talk about, I don't like the grainy gritty look and I try to avoid it, but there are times like that where that works really well. 
Now I'm taking my cad dark cadmium yellow. I'm gonna go just in a few spots. I don't wanna go too crazy with this because these guys do have a more muted look, but I can brighten some of this a bit. Now you can, if you need to, use odorless mineral spirits over your colored pencils when you've done the pan pastels. You just have to watch that, make sure for, first that the pan pastel is sprayed. But I don't usually need to. In this case, the blending, like it's just with burnishing is enough. Some of this I will come through and detail a little bit more with black, but for now I'm just gonna use my magenta color. Because if you go on top with the black and it blends in weird with the yellow, you get this weird, ugly, green, muddy color. And I want to avoid that. So while I know I'm going to need some, I'm going to hold off till the end. I'm just tinting the color here. And so I went with the polychromos. It's more translucent, not as opaque, but it's going right on top of where I had the yellow. So it works really well. Few of these areas up. I'm gonna use a little bit of brown now. Let's start building. We want to create depth in this. And if we look at there, this is almost like a little armpit, fluffy little armpit, but we've got this darker area that I need to make fade out. I'll definitely need some black there. You can use the brown too to create some more of the fluff on his body without going too dark. Somebody did not sign up for Dollar Shave Club. I'm just letting that blend nicely with those pan pastels that we put down already. Okay, let's get some of these darker colors back in now. We've got this much darker spot right in his little armpit. Wing pit? I don't know, I'm making stuff up. We wanna start creating those lines too, really defining those more. And don't just put random lines all over. Try to copy what you see in your reference photo. It doesn't have to be exact, but you do wanna be close. It's gonna look much better than if you're just putting random lines. And you may think, well, yeah, obvious, like, of course, but I see that all the time where people are like, oh, there's lines, smack, 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 and it just looks terrible. Slow down and look at your reference photo. Go for close, or at least go for close if you're not going to go for exact. Watch where the lines curve and change. Think of it more as abstract shapes. Not so much as I'm drawing a butterfly because your brain has a tendency to think, oh, I've seen plenty of those. I know what it looks like. And it really doesn't. So if you look at things, especially when you're zoomed in like this, more as abstract shapes, you're much more likely to end up with an accurate end result. Make sure you don't cover all the brown. As you come through the here with the black, we don't want all of the brown covered. It's really important we've got both in there. Some little lines in between here that are just, they don't go up that far. And all these little details, they add up to a really good end result. While you're doing it, it may think, you may feel like, oh, that little detail, it's not that important. I'll just leave it out. But when you add, keep adding more and more, it really makes it look good. I've got a line that comes through here. Separate that wing from the one underneath. Notice that I'm not going too crazy over the yellow areas. 
that. I kind of want, it looks better if I let it transition from yellow to more magentas to brown to black. Don't just go yellow black. I'm pushing really hard for a few of these little details in here. Some little dots, a few little lines. I'm going to switch over to magenta. The magenta is going to give us a much nicer, like it'll look much more rich. You'll get a lot more depth than just jumping to black. But it'll still be dark. Because remember, it's about our values. Light's light enough, dark's dark enough. That matters much more than your color. But I do need more black in here. Put a few dots in there. Now, one of the things that's happening too, it's a little bit more muted. I am definitely going to want to make this brighter, like more diff, like higher contrast there. And when the darks feel like they're not dark enough, it's because my lights aren't light enough. Or the reverse, if my lights aren't light enough, it's often because my darks aren't dark enough. So I'm going to go right around the yellow tones and let's get some richness in here between the yellow and the browns. And that's with the magenta. I'm going to brighten up some of the yellow as well. And the, the flower, I won't spend quite as much time on, the butterfly. I mean, it's obviously our focus, so we want to spend a little bit extra on this guy. The flower, we're really more just focused on getting some, our values in there, like dark's darker, light's light enough. We'll have to put some color over the legs too. Now, one of the nice things, the legs I put in there with ivory, that lightened it up. And that's going to mean that I can put the more translucent yellow on top, but the yellow will be brighter than if I just put the yellow straight over the black paper. So super helpful. Because you would really not see them well if I just went this, at least with the polychromous yellow. If I did uh, Derwent Lightfast yellow or Caran d'Ache Luminance yellow, those are more opaque. That would, sh would show up. But in this case, because I don't have those out... See, as I go over the brown, you can see a little bit, but not a ton. See how now, as I go over this with yellow, I've got a transition where it's a dark, fades from brown into that darker yellow and then into that ivory. Gives us a great fade there. going to be more opaque. Now we're getting to that point where I've got a lot of layers so I can start to feel it. It's going to be limited soon on how much more I can get on here. That's what happens when you push hard early on with, you, with the pencils. So I'm using white. This is the Derwent drawing, or I'm sorry, Derwent light fast white, and it's really opaque. So what it does, it's not going to bring this back to complete white, but it will give me a nice brighter, like it's opaque. Whoops, push too hard, broke it. It's more opaque than, surprisingly, I found it to be more opaque when I did a test than Caran d'Ache Luminance, which makes no sense. Caran d'Ache Luminance is supposed to be a higher wax content. So in theory, usually the higher wax content pencils are more opaque. Derwent light fast beat it. Oh, that one surprised me. I found that out while doing the video to show you that the Caran d'Ache Luminance was brighter and it wasn't. But that's why I went with this one instead of Caran d'Ache Luminance, if you're wondering. Both would work. That dark row here. Just making kind of a jagged line. I want to lighten up 
but not too light. Some of these areas, I'm gonna switch to ivory. That's not bright enough. Yeah, the white looks better. I'm gonna clean up those edges with the brown. Some of those are getting a little bit messy. So a lot of what I need to do now are going to be dots on this guy. So move the paper over. Let's get some little details. I also want a few more highlights. So let's actually, let's get a few in there. Not too crazy. That can also be really done with dots. Gives us a nice texture. Magenta right around the edge. And you don't want to use too many colors on this because it would get really muddy. And I'm going to slide my paper back over. We'll finish this guy up. And then we'll move on to the flowers. There we go, all my Derwent light fast because they're purples and purples, like Derwent does purples better than anybody as far as light fast colors go. So let's start, we've got some highlights with the white here. I'm just gonna work this in little circles. I don't need too much with the white because these are already pretty light. So this is way too white in here. So actually, I'm just gonna focus on one little area and work my way down, because even looking at this, I'm already getting to that point. I'm like, wait, what goes where? I'm trying to use the same color everywhere. I should take my own advice. I give you guys all the time. Pick one spot and work on it till that spot is done. So I'm gonna just do up in this area first. When you try to jump around like, okay, I've got white, where all does white go? You're gonna lose your place really quickly. Things turn into a hot mess that way. And while this, especially with the flower, it doesn't need to be exact, I still want close. So this is the Bordeaux. It's a really deep color on when done on um, against the darks that I already have. So it's working out really well. It's not too bold, which I was a little bit worried about. Sharpen that pencil. I actually like the Bordeaux better for a lot of these shadows than the purple because everything's so dark, the Bordeaux doesn't go too, too dark because it's so much lighter on its own. But the paper being as dark as it is, let's switch and do some violet around that. I don't even know if I'll use the nightshade much because it's so dark everywhere. So anywhere where it would be black on the artwork, I'm gonna do nightshade. It gives it more depth. Little dots for a lot of this will build that texture we want.
Yeah, the heather looks great for a lot of these highlights. Way better than white was just too bright. But some areas we do need broidered. I think I like the Bordeaux better than magenta there, so I'll put that pencil down. So this is gonna be kind of dark. If I go over with white, it's not gonna turn to white, or even actually, let's do with the Heather. It'll just lighten what's there. Nope, white would be better. And some of this, as I'm going through, I see where I have what did with the Pam Pastels. It's way more green in areas it doesn't belong. It does not even matter. Work it into it. And I'm pushing pretty hard here where I want that to be more burnished. But remember, because it is being pushed on hard, I'm not going to get many layers on top. A little bit of green. I don't want too much more than the green that's already on there as far as like how bright it is. And then areas that are really dark, I'm gonna push hard and do little circles here, little dots that are grouped together with a nightshade. Right up against the butterfly so that the edge is nice and clean. Like we want it frayed, but we also want it like defined. Defined frayed. I definitely need to do more of these live streams with the pan pastels. That sure saves a lot of time with blending color in. That looks so good. So I'm just hitting here where the brightest areas are gonna go. This is just a weird mess of abstract shapes, so block that in. Okay, even the violet, it's almost as dark as nightshade. I'll switch over to Heather where I want that to come out. I don't want it too bright right there where that one petal sticks out. And then we'll switch over to the Bordeaux. So that's our more magenta color. Mix some of that in there. Now one of the things you can do too, let's say you're having a hard time like the Bordeaux is not bright enough. Now this, ooh, that looks really dark on camera. Okay, the purples are not showing up well. Um, the butterfly looks really accurate. These have more purple, like they're definitely more, a little bit more color saturated than what you guys are seeing, unfortunately. But they, what you can do is anywhere you have white, let's say I wanted like this to fade into a, which area? Here, needs to be more of a light purple. I can put this over white first and then mix white into it and just get a lighter version. It'll be more pastel, but it does give me that lighter version. a 
little bit with the green. This one, what is this, grass green? Not too much. Wow, that is super muted for you guys. I apologize. This roughness is so perfect because everything, the butterfly and the flower, like this is all very velvety looking in the reference photo. And without giving, making any serious effort, it just looks like that on this because of the nature of the paper. Oops, that is way too bright. So I can go right over that with Heather. It's still too bright. Let's take some nightshade and tone that down. Much better. Got a little crazy there for a minute. So this is again with a nightshade. I'm gonna define some of that. Shade some edging, almost done. I'm excited about this guy. All I'm doing is darkening up, getting that contrast in there with a few of these areas. bit more with the contrast in a couple of spots now. This is definitely something that I think I'll do some touch-ups tomorrow where I've not stared at it for so long. I'll back away from it and see what areas are maybe drawing a little too much attention. Like right now, that is drawing too much attention. So that's the sort of thing when I have fresh eyes, it'll be easier for me to look at it and go, okay, that needs to be toned down. That is not where I want my attention to land. I mean, I can do it right now, but that's the sort of thing I mean by making changes the next day with fresh eyes. I'm gonna start pulling a little bit of magenta into a few of these areas, which is a brighter color than that Bordeaux I was using. Okay, so I am going to call him mostly done. I need to back this out because I wanna show you how to figure out where you're gonna sign your work. You want to keep in mind, whether you are selling your work matted or the customer's going to mat it, you have to keep in mind the mat. So typically, I try to do things where it's a common, a standard size, especially in something like this, so it's easy. Like, this is an 11 by 14 inch mat. It's technically 8 by 10 on the center. The mat brings it up to an overall, like the frame size you would put this in would be 11 by 14. It's a common size. If I do something that's like 10 inches by 4 inches, cool, unique, needs a custom mat, kind of pain in the butt. So by in something like this where I want to make it available that you can have an already ready mat, go with a common size, definitely makes your life easier. Now, I don't mean limit your art. If the art you have in mind just requires an odd size, go for it. But do keep in mind, it is going to be a bit of a pain for framing when it's a weird size. So just something to keep in mind. So what we're going to do is hold this up Figure out about where that's gonna set. This looks so much better in person. Okay, and then we're going to sign it. And I'm gonna use Heather. I don't want something too bright, too dark. And what I will typically do is take my pencil and hold it. Where do I think that would balance everything out and look nice? Now, I was thinking here, 
No, nope, the weight of it here. So what you want to consider, every element you add to a piece, and this I'll hold up so you can see in a second that uh, the other camera should show the magenta better, but every element you add, what even as simple as a signature, that signature, I put it here, it pulls, it adds weight. It's pulling the artwork down in this area. If I add it here, it pulls the artwork here. We want this to set and feel balanced when it's hanging on the wall. You don't want to feel like this area is too heavy and like if given the chance would make the painting sit lopsided, if that makes sense. So what I like to do is just put a little mark, like what would it look like here? What would it look like here? I don't like the weight that my signature here would cause, even though it almost makes more sense because it's a small area. I actually like the look here, the weight where it pulls it down. So I'm going to sign right here. And the reason that I hold the mat there first is I want to be able to see where, let's zoom that in a bit, where that should be. And I'm using a color that is already in the artwork everywhere else so it doesn't, you don't want your signature to be so crazy that it draws all the attention to the signature but your signature does add weight, and especially in something like this. So there is my signature, and then let me show you again what that would be like matted, where that sets. So this just feels like it has a nicer weight to me than it did over here. I just felt like this side was just bit too heavy. Now I don't want it too dark and actually even there because that is so light. I'm going to tone it down just a bit by going over it with purples. So it's not so bright. It doesn't look that bright to you guys, but trust me in person it is. There we go. Little bit toned down there. Without treats, these puppies are so sad. Your Patreon pledge of only $4 or more gives them cookies of happiness. Act now and the bad cow gets a treat too. Oh, and you also get over 300 art lessons and a new one every single week, plus other rewards. Sign up at patreon.com slash lockery.